O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. In ancient times God spoke to man, through prophets and in varied ways, but now he speaks through Christ his Son, his radiance through eternal days. To God the Father of the world, his Son, through whom he made all things, and Holy Spirit, bond of love, all glad creation, glory sings. I am wearied with all my crying, as I await my God. Say me, O God, for the waters have risen to my neck. I have sunk into the mud of the deep, and there is no foothold. I have entered the waters of the deep, and the waves overwhelm me. I am wearied with all my crying. My throat is parched, my eyes are wasted away from looking for my God. More numerous than the hairs of my head, those who hate me without cause, those who attack me with lies are too much for my strength. How can I restore what I have never stolen? O oh God, you know my sinful folly, my sins you can see. Let those who hope in you not be put to shame through me, Lord of hosts. Let not those who seek you be dismayed. Through me, God of Israel, it is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame carves my face, that I become a stranger to my brothers, and nail into my own mother's sons. I burn with zeal for your house, and taunts against you fall on me. When I afflict my soul with fasting, they make it a taunt against me. When I put on sackcloth in mourning, then they make me a byword, the gossip of men at the gates. The subject of drunkard songs. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to His Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. I am wearied with all my crying as I await my God. For food they gave me poison, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. This is my prayer to you, my prayer for your favour. In your great love answer me, O God, with your help that never fails. Rescue me from sinking in the mud, save me from my foes. 
Safe from the waters of the deep, lest the waves overwhelm me. Do not let the deep engulf me, nor death close its mouth on me. Lord, answer me, your love is kind. In your compassion turn towards me. Do not hide your face from your servant. And so quickly, for I am in distress. Come close to my soul and redeem me. Ransom me, press my foes. You know how they taunt and deride me. My oppressors are all before me, you. Taunts have broken my heart. I have reached the end of my strength. I looked in vain for compassion. For console is not one could I find. For food they gave me poison. In my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. To the Father, the Son and Holy Spirit. Give praise for every man. For food they gave me poison, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Seek the Lord, and he will give life to your soul. As for me, my poverty and pain, let your help, O oh God, lift me up. I will praise God's name with a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. A gift pleasing God, not an oxen, or then peace prepared for sacrifice. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God's seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy, is not spared his servants in their chains, and the heavens and the earth give him praise, the sea and all its living creatures. For God will bring hell to Zion, and rebuild the cities of Judah. And men shall dwell there in possession, the sons of his servant shall inherit it. Those who love his name shall dwell there. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts both now and forever. Amen. Seek the Lord, and he will give life to your soul. The Lord will teach us his ways. We will walk in his paths. A reading from the book of Judges. And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord gave them into the hand of the, Phil of the Philistines for forty years. And there was a man of Zorah of the tribe of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are barren and have no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Therefore beware, and drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For lo, you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head, for the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth, and he shall begin to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, A man of God came to me, and his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God, very terrible. I did not ask him whence he was, and he did not tell me his name. But he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. So then drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean, for the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth to the, day, to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O Lord, I pray you, 
Let the man of God, whom you send, come again to us, and teach us what we are to do with the boy that will be born. And God listened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman ran in haste and told her husband, Behold, the man who came to me the other day has appeared to me. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said to him, Are you the man who spoke to this woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now when your words come true, what is to be the boy's manner of life? And what is he to do? And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Of all that I said to the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that comes from the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, or eat anything unclean, or eat any unclean thing. All that I command her, let her observe. Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, Pray, let us detain you and prepare a kid for you. And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, If you detain me, I will not eat your food. But if you make ready a burnt offering, then offer it to the Lord. For Manoah did not know that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name? So that when your words come true, we may honour you. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why do you ask my name? Seeing it is wonderful. So Manoah took the kid with the cereal offering and offered it upon the rock of to the Lord, to him who works wonders. And when the flame went up toward heaven from the altar, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar, while Manoah and his wife looked on, and they fell on their faces to the ground. The angel of the Lord appeared no more to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to his wife, We shall surely die, for we have seen God. But his wife said to him, If the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and a cereal offering at our hands, or shown us all these things, or now announced to us such things as these. And the woman bore a son and called his name Samson, and the boy grew, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him in Manahanadan, between Zorah and Eshtaol. The angel said to Zechariah, Your wife will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. He shall not drink wine or any strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. For the boy shall be a Nazarite dedicated to God. The angel of the Lord appeared to the wife of Manoah and said to her, You shall conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head. For the boy shall be a Nazarite dedicated to God. A reading from the treatise of St. Cyprian on the Lord's Prayer. The Lord has made the conditions of his pardon very definite and clear. He obliges us to ask that our trespasses be forgiven in the measure in which we forgive those who trespass against us. We know that we cannot receive what we ask for our own offences if we do not likewise for those who offend us. This is what he says in another part of scripture. The measure you give will be the measure you get. And the servant who had his debt remitted by his master and then refused to forgive his fellow servant was thrown into jail. Because he refused to be generous with his companion, he lost the pardon his master had given him. In his precepts, Christ puts, puts this before us even more strongly when he says with the greater force of his authority, Whenever you stand to pray, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your sins. There will be no defence left to you on the day of judgment, when you, will be, when you will be judged according to the sentence you pass on others, and you will be dealt with as you have dealt with others. 
God commands us to be peacemakers and to be of one heart and one mind in his house. And what he made us at our second birth, he would have us remain, men reborn. We are sons of God and we are to preserve, sorry, we are to persevere in the peace of God. We share in the one spirit and we are to be one in heart and mind. Hence God does not accept the sacrifice of the unreconciled. He commands him to leave the altar and be reconciled first with his brother. So it is by the prayers of a peaceful man that God can be appeased. For the great sacrifice to God is this, that peace and brotherly concord exist between us and that we be a people united in the unity of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. When Abel and Cain first offered sacrifice, God did not look at their gifts, but at their hearts. So it was the man who proved acceptable in his heart, who proved acceptable in his gift. In offering his sacrifice to God with a blameless heart, Abel the just, the peacemaker, taught others a lesson. When they offer their gift at the altar, they should approach with the fear of God, with a pure heart, with holiness and a spirit of peace. It was entirely fitting that he who offered God's sacrifice with these dispositions should himself become subsequently a sacrifice to God. He was the first to bear witness he was the first to bear the witness of martyrdom, and in the glory of his blood we see the beginning of the Lord's passion, because he possessed the holiness and peace of the Lord. It is men like this who are crowned by the Lord. Men like this who will be claimed as his own by the Lord on the day of judgment. The quarrelsome and the dissident, however, and those who do not live in peace with their brothers, will not be able to escape the charge of causing discord, not even if they have been put to death for the name of Christ. This is the testimony of the Apostle and of sacred scripture, for it is written, he who hates his brother is a murderer, and no murderer can enter the kingdom of heaven or live with God. No man can be with Christ, who was chosen to follow Judas. I implore you for the sake of the Lord to lead a life worthy of your vocation. Do all you can to, pres to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. When called, you were called into, one, into the one and same hope. May God grant you to live in such harmony with one another, that together you may glorify God with one voice. When called, you were all called into the one and same hope. Let us pray. Lord God, strength of those who hope in you, support us in our prayer. Because we are weak and can do nothing without you, give us always the help of your grace, so that in fulfilling your commandments, we may please you in all we desire and do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.